Hello everyone, today I'm going to be commentating my speed art, teaching y'all how to create your own Animal Crossing title screen. What you will need is the Fink Heavy font and a wood texture. I used a wood texture that is just a zoomed in crop of the new leaf title above, and I'm also going to be commentating this live, which is a rarity for me. So what I'm failing to do right now in the video was set the color of my letter to yellow, that yellow being a sample from the text in that, right there, that New Leaf original title. Uh, the next thing I'm doing there is I'm rotating the letter around so that I can match the style of the New Leaf logo, which relies heavily on each of the letters being rotated in a different way. I know I've been inactive for a while, but I think I'm ready to get back to doing two uploads for a year about now. I have half of a 4400 review ready, so that will be out soon, hopefully. Keep in mind, not all titles are going to be the same, given the fact that uh, your word is going to be different. So your words will not always align with the same spacing. Uh, for instance, my F is going to have to be lower, given that it's a taller letter than an I. Similarly, if you have a different word count, you're going to have to perhaps make some custom spacing, which, we'll see, which you'll see later. But basically, the key to this part right now is just laying out each of the letters. Later, you'll get to style, styling, but for now, all that's required is just some brief rotation and matching up. And make sure whenever you're matching up, you have them at roughly the same elevation. Um, otherwise, that would be a hassle later. So although you're doing each one custom, you are going to have to make them on a balanced elevation for a title. All right, now I'm done with the first top level, and now I'm working on to the bottom level. As you can see there, occasionally, uh, the rotation will match up immediately. For instance, there is about three different letters in this section, which are just horizontal and require no rotation. Granted, at this part, you're going to have uh, my letters differ, considering I have less letters than what is originally in this, in what my title is going to be. However, I also have bigger letters. Um, a particular difference you might notice is the two S's in crossing. That will be very hard to emulate unless you have specific letters shaped like that. And now, as you can see, I'm almost finished with my words define gender. Uh, for context, this is my title for a research paper, or an essay that I was doing. Um, I'm not actually attaching the cover of the paper to uh, the paper, but that's because, as you'll see in a bit, this is a horror art. Not this part, but the rest is horror art. And I don't want to scare my professor, which would bias him into giving me a lower grade. He said he wouldn't. He was actually kind of weirded out when I asked him <laughs> if I could submit a cover on top of my paper. But and he said it wouldn't bias him or affect grading in any way, but I don't believe him at all. Uh, for, for reasons that will be shown likely at the end of this video. All right, so what you have there is a box that shows the uh, what you're going to need to apply to those letters, that being an inner bevel and a drop shadow. So what you saw just there was the uh, settings you need to, uh, you need to get. Uh, make sure to copy all of them because this is sped up really, really fast. So if you were to pause there, that would be effective. Now, as you can see there, I didn't think this through, so... Uh, my effects didn't immediately match it. I needed to modify it a little bit. I needed to modify the light inside to not cut deep, and I needed to modify the drop shadow to not go as far. But now that I did that, I can select all of my letters at once, and then right-click and apply paste layer style from the ones that did have it applied. And now there you have it. You have the first layering applied. And now what we're going to be working on is making a background. So there I'm just making copies so that I don't lose my work because I'm going to be using another layer in order to create that background. 
as you can see in the title above, the letters kind of form around the background. Like in the S, you can see it dips down in a circular fashion, like it is curved at the bottom of the S. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be using the feature of stroke, and I'll switch to Soccer Mommy there. <laughs> um, switching to my favorite Soccer Mommy album, which is Four Young Hearts. Um, but anyways, so yeah, I'm going to be using stroke, and what that's going to do is that's going to provide a large outline. It's going to provide some buffer space between the letters and the edge of the wooden background. And it's basically going to go like that. Of course, this is going to be a bit rough because stroke just directly applies to the letters, and that's not uniform at all, so you're going to have some differences. And so what I'm going to do to fix that problem is I'm going to uh, fill in the gaps. And then currently, the reason why this is black is that I'm just laying the foundation to get the shape of the background itself, so I'm not applying the effects of making it wooden or giving it its layer style to get a bevel and a drop shadow. So currently it's going to look a bit strange. It's going to look just like black and yellow color palette, but that's not what I'm going to be using. So as you can see there, there's some holes given that the stroke doesn't fill it all in. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be taking my brush, applying it to black, and then filling in the holes. And then another noticeable issue with using purely the stroke is that it's going to be very lumpy in its background, which is not similar at all to the above title. And some lumpiness is going to be inevitable. However, um, you can fix that by, uh, you know, just creating custom lines for it. Oh, and it looks like I closed out Photoshop there for some reason. But yeah, this is also going to be heavily subjective to whatever you want your title to be. I'm just making it to have a bit more rough edges to clean out the unnecessary gaps that simply look awkward. But again, that's not for every single gap, just some of them. And I'm almost finished there. I've deselected. I just have to finish in that one. Uh, that particular area is so that I can eventually add in a subtext that you see as uh, welcome to on the above Animal Crossing, or at least you'll see that in a second once I zoom out. Any second now? Yeah, that welcome to white text, which I'll cover eventually, that will be one of my last touches to this. So now I've got my wood, and what I'm doing there real quick is I'm putting the two woods next to each other, However, as you can see, it looks awkward because I didn't flip them, uh, therefore it wasn't a seamless texture. So what I do to make them seamless is I take one of them and I flip it horizontally so that it's basically an inverse. It's basically a mirror. And so that's going to look like it's just continuing on its own, or a seamless texture. See, it looks like one wooden plank now. And then I do that again with making it on the bottom. However, that time I do it flip vertically because it is a vertical mirror. Now I have that done, so all I need to do here is I need to create a clipping mask to crop it down, and then I need to merge layers, because after I merge layers, that's the only way I can apply a layer style. So up there, I have a circle that's displaying the layer style. That's my bevel and emboss effects. It's going to be slightly different from the ones for the letters. And, of course, that's going to have to be a bit custom, too, a bit modified, too, as it's a little bit heavier there. Um, it doesn't quite match it. Or, never mind, it's going to keep going. I forgot how I arranged these files as I'm commentating this live. So I'm adding in the welcome to portion right now. Um, I'm fully doxing myself with my full name here, uh, which is okay by me, I don't really mind. Um, so the difficulty here is just going to be arranging it, um, especially considering it's going to be a custom size of a background, it's going to be hard to find whatever subtext you want there. And of course you might not want any subtext at all, in which case you wouldn't have to be like me and that I molded around the background to have space for that. 
But yeah, I, I gotta have my name on the essay, so if that means doxing myself in this video, that's okay. And now I'm just finishing it up. I'm just breaking it into a group. And that will allow me to move it all around. And as you can see, this is why I'm not attaching um, this cover to my essay, because it, it's scary to some people, um, given the, the clowns and old Halloween costumes I put there. Uh, currently, that's just me adjusting it. That's not really relevant to the tutorial, but I'll leave it in there, I guess. Um, Thank you for watching, everyone. I'm probably going to do more of these live commentary videos in the future, just because I find them kind of fun. I might make some videos on Pokemon in the future, and of course I'm going to be finishing up my film reviews.